this was had to have been done by something else. I mean, with laser precision uh, technology. That's the scary part. So they were, what, try, um, taking notes, using us for an experiment, trying to see what's inside, I, I you know. Pretty much, yeah. That's what it kind of uh, it, uh, yeah. pointed. That same way they, they would take the cattle and do what they did with the, you know, with them. I guess they have done it with humans too, and I mean that that kind of makes me wonder. Like all I these mean, people have been missing. I mean, like in our national forest system, so yeah. many people have gone in the forest. Yeah, they could get killed by dropping off a cliff, falling in a sinkhole, whatever. But not fourteen thousand some people in less than a hundred years go into a forest and just totally disappear. Let alone the people who leave for work and never show up. Right. Yeah, our, ch- our children are, are, you know, constantly disappearing. Oh, yeah. So it makes me wonder, you know, if we are being visited. And, and you know, like I was talking to one person uh, a while back. I mean, you know, we eat everything on this planet. I mean, we've even eaten each other, right? Uh, so yeah. just because, huh. you know, I, I get some of these people on it uh, tell me, you know, aliens are fuzzy, warm, you know, lovable creatures. All they want is the best for human. I don't know. I, I, I got a funny feeling it could be the opposite, too, because they could be so far advanced. They look at us as the same way we look at that hamburger at McDonald's. Right. Right. And then, of course, you've got a whole religion, um, Scientology, that uh, basically worships aliens that's that's the whole goal of the religion you get through each level and each level and each level and by the time you get to the top you supposedly are enlightened with uh alien knowledge from another planet again the religion was created by a science fiction writer but maybe there's something to it i don't know as long as i don't get ate up i don't you know, really, I do care, but I mean, I just, it's so many things. And what I, what I'm getting is that the government keeps it from us. I mean, come on, we're, maybe they're scared going back to Orson Well, War of the Worlds. Remember how the people panicked in the thirties yeah. when that play went out and people didn't hear the very beginning of it because they were too much, uh, into listening to another channel or station. When that show was over, they switched over to that one. And people were panicking when they heard, oh, the Martians are, you know, coming into all these little farmlands and all this stuff. I mean, there's a couple cases where, like, I know one uh, where a farmer killed uh, his whole family and himself because he was so scared that uh, the aliens would get a hold of his family and be, you know, whatever. So he offed his own family thinking, you know, and it's scary. And I, maybe they think that the the, the public just wouldn't uh, accept aliens out there, especially if they're not the friendly ones. It was, I, I honestly think when he did that, it was a dry run to see what the reaction would be. And then after it turned into a complete disaster, the government decided, well, maybe we'll keep this under wraps. Well, yeah, I don't know. How do you feel? Do you feel that the, the public would uh, accept if they said that? I, I don't. I already believe that they exist. So if the government came out and said that, it wouldn't be uh, shocking. It it would be okay. Well, are they friendly? Are they not friendly? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What do we need to do to, to be safe? I would be more uh, logical about it. Um, but you're right. Some people, they just, they get crazy. Oh, yeah. I don't know if, if looting would break down and, and society would start breaking down if the government come out and said, hey, look, we've been visited by aliens. We might. I don't know. I just find it so strange now why this president all of a sudden wanted to create a space force. And then you backtrack it. Mm-hmm. Then when you had the secretary of the Air Force telling the cadets, well, hey, the next war will not be a ground war. It'll be out in outer space. I, I just kind of 
right. makes me wonder if something is up. Well, I don't, I don't know if you are familiar with David Ike or David Icke, I guess. It's like it's like sort of pronounced both ways, I-C-K-E. No, I'm not. Well, well, he's a, a famous conspiracy theorist who uh, wrote a bunch of books about how he believes the reptilian aliens are here right now on Earth. And the reason we don't see them is because they can shapeshift. And keep in mind, a lot of the things that he, he says are crazy or, or crazy sounding. Uh, he also has some racial elements. Again, he's uh, anti-Jewish. So he has uh, that going against him as well, which uh, really you know, swipe at his credibility, but nonetheless, this, he's the guy that made the whole reptilian race of aliens so popular. And he of course believes that they're already here and they're working in conjunction with another race. And he's, and they're trying to set up a new world order. I know this sounds crazier and crazier, but until this other race can come down, we need to have a one world government, a new world order, and um, supposedly the royal family uh, in England are reptilian. Supposedly, um, the um, some big shot CEOs of major corporations are reptilian, and and once we get this one world government going, then the reptilians allies will come down and we're going to be the space station, not the other way around. Now that is scary. Maybe that's why the Royal family and some of these rich people don't eat garlic. I was just reading an article the other day over in uh, the Royal family. She will not allow them to have any form of garlic at all on the premises. Hmm. Hey, this a thought like vampires. Yeah, they could be. That yeah. Or a form of it. I Vampires. don't know. Vampires. But, yeah, it just makes me wonder huh. what's going on. And I'm scared more for my, you know, grandkids than I I am for me. But, you know, again, talking to Mary Joyce, she was telling me that uh, the information she had from a, a scientist, which she said she checked it, checked them out. Now, she also was a reporter for a few major publication newspapers in the past. And uh, she is really in the know. She claims that, uh, well, there's one species of aliens that are, you know, working with our government. And she claims that they're working out of North Carolina, an underground base. But they have one thing about humans they don't like. They don't like us except for one thing. Food. We're food. Yeah, for, for food. <laughs> I've and, heard. It, I've heard that. I've heard that before. We're we're food. Yeah, for food, and, and well, you know, but you know, they're working with our government, sharing information back and forth, probably giving us very little and taking it as much. You know how we are. We'll supply them everything if we supply our our credit card information to a big corporation, right? I, I'm sure the government will supply everything for a little bit of technology, wouldn't they? Uh, of course. Of course. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Hitler, for example, is uh, documented in his beliefs in aliens. He, his whole idea of this master race is not really a German thing. It's an Atlantean thing. If you go back far enough, this Aryan race he was so obsessed about, well, First of all, the Aryans, the, his his ideas are flawed because to start with, the Aryan race comes from Persian Persia. So, so technically, they're the Aryan race is Middle Eastern. But that flaw aside, according to Hitler and his secret societies, the Aryan uh, race was one of the seven human races that descended directly from the Atlantean aliens who, of course, inhabited the country Atlantis, which we know so well from Plato's writings. So 
here we've got someone who wants to take over the world, and he believes very seriously that he and the German race are hybrids. That's why, what makes them so special. Well, maybe the aliens that contacted him gave him that information, you know, or fed it to him, one of the two, there, and he believed it. There was a there was a crash very much like Roswell uh, a couple years before Roswell. And at the time, Germany had the most advanced weaponry on the planet, uh, like overnight, from, uh, you know, pistols to... Um, you know, to rockets in a couple of years. Yeah, I always, how do you get to point A to point B so fast? That's what I always found very interesting. I mean, here they were, right from World War One. They were pretty much stripped of all their manufacturing capabilities for a long period of time. Uh, they were stripped for a while from building up a military. And, you know, and back in the mid 30s and stuff, they were, you know, still using guns from World War One. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like in the, the later 30s, all of a sudden they were coming out with technology. It was advancing so fast, faster than anything ever has in this country. Uh, and, and how is that possible? I can't see um, it done, you had, know, naturally. They had to have help. I This this is just a theory that I have. Uh, I I do think that they had some really smart people. That There's no question about that. But these smart people uh, were contacted by these aliens that crashed in um, the Black Forest. And that's, you know, why they got, you know, um, the, the, best, uh, the, the best Air Force in the world, the best rockets in the world. All of that, um, I truly believe, from alien technology. And I, I would go a step even farther that when the war was over and Hitler knew he was going to lose, uh, he made a deal with America and basically said, uh, if you let me live, if you let me and some of my favorites escape without interfering in our lives for the rest of our lives, I'll give you a list of our top scientists and you can round them up and you can be the superhero that we wanted to be. And sure enough, as we found out earlier in the year, through when Trump released the JFK files, that Hitler was alive and well. He um, got went to Argentina. He lived a long time in Colombia and who knows where else in South America. There's uh, pictures of him and all kinds of reports about his whereabouts. Oh, and yeah. And, of course, that movie... Yeah, Operation Finale uh, just came out about Eichmann, Adolf, Adolf Eichmann. So we knew, don't tell me that America had no idea that Hitler and Eichmann and, you know, a couple dozen other uh, head Nazis were living La Vida Loca in, in South America, and they knew nothing about it. Especially we've got the, um, the um, Israeli Mossad, on a Nazi hunter kick and nobody knew this until now. I, I just, I'm not buying it. Well, I don't, so there's some definite ties. Uh, oh, I'm I, sorry. I, I really do think that he survived the war because what they found, you know, and, and Hitler had doubles, you know, this like Churchill and, and Stalin and all those people had doubles and doubles and doubles. I sure hate to be Hitler's double though. But, you know, yeah. what they, the remains they did find, it was virtually nothing. And, you know, and then the proof of it is it, so sketchy on that. And again, you know, yeah. when you research it, the proof, you, you do the, find the proof was a 40 year old woman. The DNA results that, cause, um, what is he? His, his guard set his body on fire or something after he shot himself or some whatever. The DNA on that, because Russia took the body, was a 40-year-old woman. Yeah, not even Hitler. My feeling is that Hitler was long gone and his body double, that poor guy, was in that bunker. 
Yeah. 